This is Math 99, Section 7.6. We're doing complex fractions. And complex fractions, uh, we call them that just because they're like a fraction over a fraction. It's, it's nested division in a sense. So here's an example of a complex fraction. Uh, One-fifth divided by five-ninths, or one-fifth over five-ninths. Notice that it's something over something else. Um, and I just want to take this second to point out, like you might already know this, but I, I didn't figure this out till an adult, that this, where you have something over something else, how it's a fraction, that's how that looks like a division sign. That's just a nice connection telling us that, uh, you know, division is, uh, is, is fractions, and fractions are divisions. Fractions are like division undone. Um, so anyways, that being said, uh, that helps us deal with complex fractions, because if I have a complex fraction, and notice it's just a fraction over a fraction. That's the same as saying uh, one-fifth divided by five-ninths. I just top divided by bottom. That's what fractions are. And now I'm just dividing fractions, and we know how to do that. We just did that in the, in the last section. So um, in order to divide fractions, I can take the reciprocal of the thing I'm dividing by, and then if I could do some canceling, I would. Nothing cancels. One times nine is nine. Five times five is 25. Nine twenty-fifths. It's kind of weird, but it is telling us that uh, five ninths goes into one fifth, nine twenty fifths times. Well, that sounds like nonsense, doesn't it? Uh, but that is what is going on. It's actually a nice way to think about it, I think. So let's do another complex fraction. We had something like x to the fifth over y cubed, and that is going to be over um, x squared over y to the eighth. Same idea. This is just division. So it is the top divided by the bottom, which is, is just the same as the top times the bottom. Now you don't have to, but some people will just skip straight to that step. They won't they won't rewrite this part. But I think it's just for clarity. I'm gonna I'm gonna keep rewriting it. Uh, so from here I can keep going to do some reducing. I know that I have an x squared here and an x to the fifth here x squared goes into x to the fifth three times. So this goes into that, not three times, but x to the third power times, right? Like these these two x's, this is x times x. Cancel out two of these x, two of these five x's, leaving me three x's. Uh, similarly, y to the third and y to the eighth. Um, these three y's cancel out three of these y's, leaving me, uh, if I take away three, five of them. And notice in the bottom I have uh, one times one, in the denominator and in the numerator x to the third times y to the fifth that's just x to the third times y to the fifth it's over one so i can i don't need to write the, the one in the denominator part so this is equivalent to that is what i'm saying so let's go ahead and do this next example y minus one over x over x minus one over y now this is a this is a complex fraction. It's it's not just a fraction, right? It's something that's that's complex over something else that's complex. So what I want to do um, in order to be able to just flip and multiply is combine this down to a single fraction and combine that down to a single fraction. So I'm just going to actually do the subtraction here. I want to go y minus one over x. In order to do that, I'm going to need a common denominator, and this one's already over x. So if I multiply it by this version of one. That will turn this into um, xy minus 1 divided by x. And I'm going to do the same thing with the denominator. This is already over y. So if I multiply by y over y, then they'll have a, they'll have a common denominator. And notice it says yx. That's the same as xy. You can multiply in whatever order you want. And that's over y. And so now I have this division. This is, this is division. So I have a xy minus 1 over x divided by xy minus 1 over y. And uh, I'm going to start this because I'm going to come back and show you a connection after I just go through the go through the process. So dividing by a fraction, that's the same as multiplying by the reciprocal of the thing I'm dividing by. So I can multiply by the reciprocal. And then I notice that xy minus 1 divided by itself is 1. That leaves me a y over x. 
And you know, notice what I'm saying is that this is a, is equivalent to that. Let me erase this work. So like if you told me x was 5 and, and y was 7, uh, x was 5, sorry, and y was 7, um, I'd do a bunch of work over here, but what I did is 7 fifths as an answer. The only way this will, time of this would break down is either when x is 0 or when y is 0. All right, um, I'm going to go back to the star. Now you don't have to do it this way, but when you divide by fractions, just like when you multiply by fractions, you can go straight across. So Notice if I had this, which is just that. x, y minus 1 divided by itself is 1. x divided by y is x divided by y. And dividing by a fraction is the same as flipping it. Like you, you sometimes you do eventually have to do the flip anyways. But um, sometimes if you're, you're here and you notice, you can start to do canceling straight across too. Because you're just dividing top by top, bottom by bottom. Now let's do another another example. Two over x minus five over x plus one over x squared minus twenty-five. Uh, complex fraction. It is already a fraction over a fraction, so I don't have to do the manipulation like I did in the last problem. So let me rewrite it. Uh, Three over x minus five divided by x plus one over squared minus 25. And uh, this idea of dividing straight across, I don't see any shortcuts there. So I'm just going to flip and multiply. And again, um, sometimes if you're here, you, you'll jump. Some folks will jump straight to here. They won't go through this step. That's, that's totally fine if you're doing that. And if you're not, it's also totally fine. Whatever's going to work for you. I'm going to factor what I can. These are fine. X squared minus 25. That's a difference of squared. That's so x plus 5 times x minus 5. And what's lovely about that is that x minus 5 cancels out. So that leaves me a uh, 3 times x plus 5. In the numerator. Divided by x plus 1. And... Uh, you can leave it like this. You do not need to distribute the 3 into there and write this as 3x plus 15. I mean, it's okay if you do, but uh, more work more work than you need to do. All right, I have three more three more examples that I'd like to, like to do. So this next one is 1 over a squared plus 5a plus 6. And that is over 1 over um, a plus 3. I have a fraction over a fraction. It's already, I don't need to do anything to combine it. It's already single fraction, already single fraction. So that's the same as this. Which is the same as this. I'm going to invert, take the reciprocal, and multiply. And then um, going from here, I noticed that um, there's some factoring I can do. These are fine, but this bottom right here, this factors to uh, things that multiply to 6, add to 5, 3 and 2, which is lovely because that x plus 3 divides out, and that leaves me a 1 over a plus 2. And just to make the connection, again, you don't have to do it this way, but at this division point in this particular problem, we know that this factors to uh, a plus 3 times a plus 2 divided by 1 over a plus 3. If I divide straight across here, 1 divided by 1 is 1, and a plus 3 divided by a plus 3 is 1, leaving me an a plus 2. You get the same answer both ways. This is a, this is a pretty convenient one to not have to flip and multiply, but again, it doesn't matter. You can do whatever works. Another couple of examples. The next one is 1 over, uh, 1 plus 1 over a, over 1 minus 1 over a squared. So as I take a peek at this one, it's not just a fraction over a fraction. It's still complex, but uh, I'm going to have to do a little bit of work to get into a form. I'm going to just, uh, that I could use. I'm going to do this addition. 
So I need a common denominator. So I'm going to multiply this one by a over a. And that gives me a, uh, a plus 1 over a. Do something similar with that denominator. Uh, this has an a squared, so I'm going to multiply this by a squared over a squared. That leaves me a uh, a squared minus 1 over a squared. Cool. So this is division. a plus 1 over a divided by the bottom. a squared minus 1 over a squared. I'm going to turn that into multiplication. So times a squared over a squared minus 1. And I'm going to do a little bit of uh, factoring here. These are all good. This bottom one here, though, that's difference of squares. So that's an a plus 1 times a minus 1. So my a plus 1s divide out. I also notice that this a divides out one of these a's squared. So the squared's gone. It's just a single a up there. So it looks like my answer is going to be a over a minus 1. And that's it. Um, I think that it's tempting for some people to try and cancel out, like just go, oh, that's an A, that's an A. But remember, um, we can't do that across, across subtraction. In order to cancel out this A minus 1, we would need another A minus 1 up here. So this is our answer. Stop here. Don't, don't be tempted by that. All right, last example. One, one more. And it is uh, 2 over A plus 1 plus 3. And that whole thing is over uh, 3 over a plus 1 plus 4. So as I go to combine this one, uh, I notice this isn't just a single fraction and neither is this. So I'm going to combine them down to a single fraction each first. So this top one, um, I'm going to actually do that addition. And I need a common denominator for it. So I notice that this is over a plus 1. So I'm going to multiply this by a plus 1 over a plus 1. And in the denominator, this is also an over an a plus 1. So I'm going to multiply, same idea, this by a plus 1 over a plus 1. And if I do that, what I'm left with is a uh, 2 plus 3 times a plus 1 over a plus 1. And that whole thing is over... 3 plus 4 times a plus 1 over a plus 1. So I basically have a fraction over a fraction. Now some of you, you may have, when you were looking at this, just going, oh, just distribute that 3 and combine like terms. That's great, because that's that's what we're going to do, do next. I'm, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to simplify this down. Just a lot of symbols I'm carrying around. So up here I have 2 plus 3a plus 3. And that is just uh, 3a plus 5 for a plus 1. And I'm going to do something similar in the denominator. Uh, 3 plus, if I distribute that 4, 4a plus 4. So that is a 4a plus 7. I started to write a 3. 4a plus 7, and that's over a plus 1 as well. So this is division. So this is uh, 3a plus 5 over a plus 1 divided by 4a plus 7 over a plus 1. So I'm not done yet, but I just did that because I want to show you two ways to think about that. One of these is just plow through that algorithm. Flip and multiply. So it's uh, 3a plus 5 over a plus 1 times a plus 1 over 4a plus 7. As you know, a plus 1 divided by itself is 1. So that leaves me a 3a plus 5 over 4a plus 7. And now I don't have a 4a plus 7 in the numerator. I don't have a 3a plus 5 in the denominator, so I'm done. There's nothing else to cancel. Notice if you didn't flip, again, you don't have to do it this way. I just want to point out you can divide straight across. So in the bottom, I have a plus 1 divided by a plus 1. That's just a 1. And in the top, I have uh, 3a plus 5 divided by 4a plus 7, which is exactly what, what 
this says, what this fraction says. So again, you can divide straight across or you can flip and multiply. Flipping and multiply will always get you there. Sometimes it's more work. All right, give some of these uh, problems in this set a, uh, a try. Let me know what questions you're having. Let me know how it's going. And uh, good luck. I'm, and good jobs. I'm sticking with it so far.